everyone. I'm out with those Arcobalade Adventures. And it is a gorgeous, all oh, that windy, uh, day in the Ozarks. Uh, it, it's a Wednesday and I, I had a free day to, to, to just come and check it out. I'm gonna camp tonight. Um, but I, I, there are three reasons why I'm out here. One, because it's springtime in the Ozarks, which is the best time to be in the Ozarks. Uh, and water crossing are beautiful. The dogwoods and redbuds are blooming. I just, I, I had a day and I could. Um, second reason is uh, this weekend, it, it, it'll be passed when this video comes out, but this weekend we are doing a, an event for our patrons uh, here in the Ozarks for a, uh, for a group of them. And this is one of the trails that we're going to be going on. And I just, I, I wanted to run these water crossings just to make sure that, you know, stock vehicles are going to be fine and it's going to be a great weekend. And three, I, I wanted to come camp because I've got, uh, I've, I've got something new. Uh, it's actually Kara's, but I wanted to test it out. And um, I, I won't be sleeping in my, in my rooftop tent tonight. Uh, I actually have a ground tent that I, that I want to try. She, she tested it. Um, Back when we were in Arizona, she was doing the training in the Imperial Sand Dunes, this video series that just ended but before this one. And she said it was amazing. And I'm not a ground tent fan, so I, I wanted to find out for myself. She is out of town, uh, heading to California now uh, for another Rebel Rally training. So, so she's gone. I had this beautiful day, and we're, we're gonna keep going. There is kind of a fourth reason uh, for, for being out today, and it's really the main subject matter of this video, and hence why the title is called Don't Be That Guy. And, and as usual, yeah, the, the bulk of my conversation starters uh, happen because of social media, and this one's no exception. I woke up this morning uh, to a guy in, in my Facebook group for the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail, uh, which is, I mean, all the trails that we're running today are on the OOAT. And he had posted uh, in my OOAT group um, a, a trip that he had had on the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail, and it was wonderful, and he was sharing his photos. But there was one video that he posted in there of him being off trail and driving across a waterfall. Um, and so I want to talk about some, some tips and tricks, uh, just some things to be aware of when you are out in National Forest, BLM land, any public land uh, where we're off-roading, just, just to make sure you're not that guy who either one gets a ticket, gets busted for something stupid, um, or I think even worse is the guy who, or girl, uh, who, yeah, doesn't know better, and, and this guy didn't. Uh, I, he and I had a great conversation. Um, anyway, he, he vowed lesson learned, he'll do better. But, yeah, don't be that guy who gives Forest Service, BLM, National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife, that gives the powers that be reasons to shut more trails down. Um, I did a video several months ago, in the last year, I think in the fall, uh, entitled, We Could Lose It All. We Could Lose Everything, I think was the actual name. And I, I talked about the closures that happened out in Moab and the BLM, on the BLM land. Um, there's more of that going on um, in Utah, in the San Rafael Swell. Um, I've heard reports of stuff in Oregon. Uh, there's some trails that were closed down here in the Ozarks. Um, earlier this year with the release of the new motor vehicle use maps. So, we're, we're going to talk about that along the way. But first, I want to get to um, another little area, go visit a little waterfall. And the main place I want to camp tonight is, is somewhere else.
I think the best way to just not be that guy, and, and I think this just kind of overshadows everything, is to stay on the trail. Make sure that you are staying on the trail. So many of the issues that I see that cause problems, get people tickets, get areas shut down, is 90% of the time people not staying on the trail. Here in the Ozarks, going off trail, driving off across a waterfall, driving up a stream bed, those sort of things. Um, out in Colorado, driving off trail, out onto the tundra. Um, same thing for, you know, areas out in Utah. Uh, you know, just, just stay on the trail. And it's one of those things, I just, I don't think it should be that hard to just stay on the trail. And one of the keys to that, I think, is have some form of map with you when you're out there. Even if it's a paper map, if you're old school, have a paper map. Or there's so many great resources that have all the pertinent information, both Gaia GPS and Onyx Off-Road have the motor vehicle use map information in their app. There's just, and everybody's got a phone, everybody's got a smartphone. There should be no excuse for being off trail. But it happens over and over and over again. And um, I, I'll show you here in just a second. All right, we're at a campsite here. This is along the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail. Beautiful waterfall. Mill, Mill, Mill Hall Falls, something like that. I don't remember. But a beautiful little waterfall here. Um, this, th this, this looks like a, a trail right here. This, oh look. I mean, this, this does look like a trail. And maybe at one time it was. And if you look across there, it looks like there's another trail. So, I mean, just without having resources, this looks like a trail. But here's a, here's, there we go. Here's the, uh, this area in Gaia. This is, this road is on the motor vehicle use map. So this one, this is County Road right here. Um, and you can see there is no road there like like none like zero all it takes is just it, just just looking at the map and you'll quickly see there, there's no road there so there's no reason to be driving a vehicle across this waterfall which is illegal and it's a double whammy because not only are you driving on a stream bed where there's not a legal crossing a legal crossing is key because we're about to drive across the same stream bed at a legal crossing so that's key um, but since there's no legal crossing here you get a double whammy for being off trail which is a 250 dollar fine and then a another ticket called resource endangerment basically playing in a stream uh that's a 300 dollar fine so 550 bucks in fines if you were to get caught doing this And then the other thing you can do is just walk it. There's a reason why I wear sandals all the time in the Ozarks. And if you walk it, you get over here and realize there's no trail. I don't know what this is. It just doesn't go anywhere. So, So you can use you know your resources or you can just use common sense and you know go check it out on foot before putting places at risk yeah that water crossing exact same one actually you could see the waterfall in the background of that crossing. It is, it was that close. 
And so that is a legal crossing. What makes a legal crossing? Well, there's a road there. And there's no bridge. I, I really hope that I'm not coming across preachy in this. Uh, that, that, I, that is the opposite of, of my goal here. When I started this channel back in 2015, came up with the name Ozark Overland Adventures, I, I, I didn't have the goal of being a full-time YouTuber. Um, that was not that was not the plan at all. But the goal of the channel has always been to educate and inspire. To inspire my audience, to, to those watching this, to get out and see amazing things. Most of the time being four-wheel drive and getting off pavement. But to just be inspired to get out and, and do this overlanding thing and see amazing places. And then to educate you on how to do that responsibly how to you know select the right gear um, how to build your rig to do this so that's that's the education piece so I, I, I hope that's coming across I, I really am passionate about making sure that you know we do this thing responsibly making sure that you know we don't lose any more trails than we already have Anyway, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive and shut up for a minute. Uh, this county road is going to dump me out on the pavement, and I've got maybe a 15-minute drive to, to get to the next area where I'm going to camp. Saw this picnic table here and thought this would be a good opportunity to introduce to you the sponsor of this video bespoke post bespoke post has been a very good partner of the channel and i very much appreciate their continued support and they've got some really cool stuff bespoke post is a neat company uh, if you don't know what bespoke post is it's a monthly membership club where you get a box of awesome or in this case a, a bag of awesome uh, stuff each month it's all top shelf items um, probably for some some brands you've never heard of and really good quality stuff it is free to join you can cancel at any time you can skip months if you need to each month they introduce their members uh, to some really cool products from some new brands and it, they do their selections from a quiz that you fill out when you sign up and fill in all your preferences and from that quiz they you know figure out what you like and that's what they offer to you um, for me it's mostly outdoor stuff but they've got cocktail stuff uh, home goods uh, clothing uh, this is this is a box or, or a bag uh, called off duty and it's uh it's 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 loungewear so it's got this 100 percent cotton white uh white long sleeve tee, these very comfortable pants. I will most likely be, be sleeping in this tonight. Uh, the temps are supposed to get like in the, in the mid to upper 30s. It's unusually cold for this time of year, but I'm, I'm gonna be sleeping in, in the, um, the off-duty um, box or, or, or bag tonight, but I, I've already cheated and worn these around the house. They're, they're super comfortable. This one is called the Trail, and you get a, 
a cool little kind of ammo can box. It's uh, from a company called Smithfield. You get uh, this Surviving the Great Outdoors book. Um, it's got lots of cool stuff in it. Um, it's got categories for in the mountains, in the water, in the back country. Should I carry matches or a lighter? Um, what do I need to go car camping? How do I put up a hammock? How do I poop in the outdoors? So lots of cool information in here. Um, it comes with a commando wire saw and I'm a sucker for knives. Uh, this, is, this is one uh, from a company called Rill. Real simple tools. It's a it's a gut hook knife. And what I love about Bespoke Post is that 90% of the products you get come from small brands, many of which are made right here in the U.S. Uh, for example, this uh, this gut hook knife, it's uh, it's made in Illinois. Um, and God, this thing is this thing is way nice. I, I like this. I'm a sucker for knives, and Bespoke Post has a lot of different knives, and I've gotten a lot of different knives from them. Um, and also in here is a Kind of survival uh, paracord bracelet so you just wear this and if you need some cordage you can take it apart um, but that's a cool little kit here and then this one is called the split uh, this the split box and it's a it's a little hatchet from bare bones i've i've met bare bones at one of the expos last year super company we've got some lights from them i've got more knives from them um, and they've got more bare bone stuff at Bespoke Post, but I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna have a fire tonight because it's gonna get cold. I'm gonna use this to, uh, to chop the firewood and see how that goes. Bare Bones is completely free to join. You only pay when you, when you want one of the boxes. You can preview the boxes, so you're never getting stuck with a box that you don't want. You get to check it out and kind of preview it each month. And if you wanna, if you don't want it, you can cancel it. If you do want it, you can get it. If you wanna pick something else, you can do that. You can kind of scroll through. So you got lots of options there. It's not one of those membership programs where you, where you just get what they send you and you're stuck with it and eh, you know, kind of a waste of money. This one is not. I'll put the link with the promo code down in the description. And for, for first time members, you get a free mystery gift. Uh, so a little bonus mystery gift with your first box of awesome that uh, it should be pretty cool. So thank you Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. We're gonna get on down the trail to camp. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things still to see that way. More water crossings, mud holes, um, and some beautiful waterfall that we're gonna camp next to. Uh, but Bespoke Post, you're awesome. Thanks. Getting back to the topic of conversation, how not to be that guy. And I can't believe this continues to be an issue. But pick up after yourself. And sadly, pick up after others. Always leave a campsite better than you found it, even if it's not your mess. It's, it, it just never ceases to just amaze me when I come into a campsite that's been trashed by someone like they just don't care like they, they come into this place of just immense beauty and leave their garbage behind I, I, I just understand that so in I, I think the places being trashed is a big reason for some places getting shut down um, just because people don't respect it and so they close it whether it's with trash graffiti um, you know tearing it up with their vehicles but leave things better than you find it pick up your trash leave no trace pick up other trash that other people have left behind be the better person be that guy that gets to a campsite that's trashed and cleans it up and makes it better for the next person Here's another good example of how not to be that guy. 
Um, this is, you know, something you'll find very common in the Ozarks is this multiple path of mud hole. And people just keep widening it and widening it and widening it. Um, way back when, when I first started doing this and came through here on the very first time, these two right here were your only options. And I know from experience, this one, bad. Very, very bad. Very nasty, very muddy, very goopy. You do not want to go into this one. This one, hard rock bottom all the way through. But people get to this and they don't do their due diligence and, you know, grab a stick. Here, here's a stick. This, someone did their due diligence. Um, you see this stick has mud on it. So you, you find a stick and you, you, you take the stick and you just walk around the mud hole and you poke and you test and you figure out which one's the better mud hole. Um, I know, I mean, these, all of these over here are like this one. These are all deep. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Ooh. So the ground, the ground starts there. That's not very deep. But then all of that is mud. So you come into this area and you don't check things out. And then you ruin your vehicle. You tear up the ground. Your buddies see you do this, so they skip to a next one. This used to be all, all woods, and now people have cut it out to try to make bypasses. And every single one of these is goopy and nasty, except for that one. That one, the OG, is still hard rock bottom. And, and none of this mess is necessary. See? And look how unnecessary all the rest of that was. That was super easy. Driving on rocks, not, not goopy mud. Almost to camp. Oh, there's another big, looks really intimidating mud hole. That's not. Uh, but camp is just up here around the corner. Unfortunately, this is one of those camps that if someone's already there, you got a long way to go to find another one. And it's a very special campsite. One of my favorites, probably my second favorite campsite. Um, in the Ozarks, but I don't camp here very much because it's hard to it's hard to find. And if you camp here on a weekend, there's a lot of traffic. So, uh, but it's a Wednesday. So I am gambling uh, that no one's here. Um, it is 6:20, so if I do have to bail and find another campsite, I'm probably not going to get to it until dark. That should be a real bummer. I don't see anybody there. Nope, we're good. What a beautiful spot. Springtime in the Ozark. It's just incredible. And I got here before the sun went down, 
so time to set up camp. Well, I told you I was sleeping in the ground tent tonight, and this is it. Uh, this is by uh, Kamek Gear, uh, maker of most things hammocks, uh, but this is their new ground tent. It is a ground tent that can also be a hammock. I'm not going to sleep in it as a hammock, uh, but it's the the, the Snuda, the Snuda, two p, two person tent. Um, we're gonna get it set up. Now, if you know me, if you watch the channel, you know I love my rooftop tents, and this is one of the reasons why. Um, because I can very easily level my Gladiator to to have a you know I put some rocks under the tires, or traction boards or something. Um, I can't level this for a ground tent, so. I, I, I think this isn't bad. It's mostly rock, which means I can't stake it down, so I'll use some big rocks in the corners. Um, but we'll see. Well, that's it. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to set it up as a hammock. Um, but you can. You can totally just convert that into a hammock. And how small it is. I mean, that, that's impressive. Now, as great as the tent is, it's small and lightweight. I mean, it, it's not any good unless you have something comfortable to sleep on. Because getting a good night's sleep, I mean, that's what's important. I'm not coming out here to just throw a sleeping bag on the ground and not get to sleep all night. So this is what makes any tent awesome. This. And, and this is what Kara said was, was the most amazing thing for her Rebel Rally setup. Is, is the Kamek tent and the Born Badger bed. This, this is all your bedding, your, your sleeping pad, everything in one. All right, well, this is it. It's all ready to go. So what you have here is, uh, you know, in the Badger bed, you've got, ugh, um, a really high quality thermal rest uh, memory foam and self inflating mattress. Uh, it does, you know, it inflates faster if you use a little pump like I did with a little flex tail pump. Um, this just keeps everything secured. Uh, it comes with fitted sh a sheet set, fitted top sheet. Um, and this particular model, uh, two 30 degree down blankets. And all of this stuff attaches. I don't know if I can show it. Um, ugh, can't show it very good. Uh, attaches down here. There we go. So none of this is coming off of you in the middle of the night. So your feet stay nice and covered and warm. And yeah, um, I mean, sitting up, plenty of headroom in here. Uh, I mean, this is, it's real comfortable. This is basically the same kind of mattress I sleep on in my tent. So, yeah, it's going to be real comfortable. Um, there's plenty of headroom. The tent um, has windows and vents on both sides. Both sides can be doors or windows. You can configure each one. And let me let me go ahead and, and deal with this now. Before you... Go to the comments and you googled this and you've gone to their website yes this badger bed 30 um, it, it is like 800 dollars it is 
But if you go out and price a good quality mattress pad, um, like this Thermarest, uh, the sheet set, um, two really high quality down blankets, I mean, you're gonna be six, seven hundred dollars just in that. And then the Badger bed gives you the whole cover case thing that rolls up and just keeps everything self-contained. So, I mean, if you're looking at quality stuff, then you're gonna be hitting this price point anyway. And this stuff is absolutely quality stuff. I've got one down top quilt. It's like 400 bucks. Just, just one. Um, and this comes with, with two. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's expensive, but it's quality stuff. And if you are, you know, if you're pricing this stuff out on your own, you're gonna come close. For dinner tonight, also doing something I've never done before, and that's a freeze-dried meal. Like, you know, Mountain House or the, what's the other one? Peak? The Peak? Something like that. Um, I, I've never used a freeze-dried meal before. I always cook, but I figured since I'm sleeping in a tent, might as well give this a shot too. Um, I, I mean, I've tasted a couple of them, but I've never actually ate one. Um, these are from a company called Mamu's Camp Kitchen. Um, I haven't tried these yet. They're out of Farmerville, Louisiana. Uh, full transparency, they reached out to me and just said, hey, we want to get your opinion on this. Is it any good? They, they, didn't, off, they didn't ask me to do it on camera, um, but I thought, why not? Hopefully it's good, because if not, it's going to get real awkward. Um, so I think I'm... I'm I think I'm gonna try the King Ranch chicken. I've also got a chicken and sausage jambalaya. So I think I'm gonna try those. And for my water, I'm using this electric, it's called a Jewel. It's by Stoke Voltaics. You can get them on Amazon. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do this instead of a jet boil. There we go. Um, you just, if you put it on drink, it will get it to boiling and then shut off. If you put it on eat, it will keep, keep boiling. Um, I have tested this. If you have the power, it's pretty cool. It is not near as fast as a jet boil, but it also doesn't require fuel and it doesn't take up as much space because of the fuel. So a, a jet boil, my jet boil will boil water in about 90 seconds. This takes six minutes. I got nothing else to do. All right, it's boiling. All right. I remember someone telling me you need a longer spoon to do this. And reseal, let sit for 10 minutes. I'll be back. That was good.
No bowl required. I think I was supposed to remove that. Do not eat. What about eating it after it's been in there? Here it goes. Okay, that's real good. Yeah, that's real good. I mean, it doesn't look the best, but I'm guessing none of these look the best, do they? But the flavor is excellent. Winner. I gotta say, this is super comfortable. I just feel like I'm in my own little, little cocoon. I gotta like it. I got my, got a line uh, string up across the top to, for my iPad so I can watch a little Netflix before going to sleep. I think it's gonna be very good. I'll see you in the morning, let you know how it goes. There's no way to get out of a little small tent like that, Grace. Did sleep well. Um, that Born Badger bed, super comfortable, super warm. I mean, if you need to pack small and don't want all that weight on top of your vehicle, that's a, that, that's a heck of a system. It is so amazing here. I love this spot. I just don't get to experience very often. Yeah, I can see why this spot's popular. That's why you gotta come during the week, not on a weekend. Yeah. But uh, the plan, uh, it's, it's early, it's like 7.30. I didn't bring breakfast. Um, so I think I'm just going to enjoy staring at this waterfall for a little bit longer. Uh, pack up the tent, put away my chair, the fire pit, you know, a couple little things. And then press on. Um, the trail out of here is a lot of fun. Uh, it's got some nice technical spots, it's got some long mud holes. Um, the trail does continue. Uh, right right over there on that flat spot. So do we do cross the stream right up there and Actually, this is a good another good example. This right here looks like You know you could put, It looks like maybe another trail over there But if you I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it just it just loops and comes back over there So there's there's no trail there and if you look at the map again, there's no trail crossing here the crossing is up there. And I've seen quite a few people just think that, you know, it's okay to just park here. I have actually seen people set up their rooftop tent in the water, park the vehicle and open their tent in the water. Um, I, I'm really shocked this area has not been shut down yet because this is a hot spot for stupidity right here. Um, I have seen side-by-sides driving up and down the waterfall as if it's as if it's some off-road park obstacle so don't be that guy or girl i mean girls can be dumb too
Don't be that person. There we go. Okay, we're off. And this is such a fun little trail. It's got a little bit of everything on it. Water crossings, mud holes, rock ledges, steep hill climbs. It's a good one. I think I'm gonna have to make a, a, a rooftop tent, ground tent comparison video. After sleeping in the ground tent last night, I think it's just time that I do that. Uh, I mean, there's no right answer. It's personal preference, but definitely gain some insights there. So I, I will be making that video in the near future. Okay, continuing the, the conversation of how not to be that guy. I think one of the key things you can do, especially if you're going into an area that you've never been to before, you know, like say you're from out of state and you're going to Colorado um, or Utah or Arizona or whatever, do your research beforehand. Study the motor vehicle use maps of the area that you're going to. If it's a national forest, uh, go to the BLM website and, you know, look at places where you can and cannot camp, those sort of things. Um, it's almost cliche at this point, almost uh, stereotype at this point. Um, but hold on, deep metal. Actually, I decided to go around that one. I remember the last time going through that with that group, that being sloppy and I'm by myself. So, but it's almost uh, cliche stereotype. You know, people from Texas going to Colorado and just screwing it up going off into the tundra those sort of things um yeah so do your research beforehand go to like a colorado off-road page and ask on you know on facebook ask uh, hey coming in for the first time what are some things i need to know about camping and um staying on trail and those sort of things you'll probably get some hateful comments like you should just stay home just ignore those um and you know, I think you'll get a lot of respect by asking the question instead of just possibly going and making mistakes. So, uh, but I think doing your research before you go into a new area is, is key. And I think one more thing we can do, one more mindset that we need to have, not to just not be that guy, but to help others not be that guy, is we have got to police our own. Like if you see people, you know, doing something stupid that puts trails at risk, call them out. I mean, you can do it hatefully, which I've done before, 
Um, or you can, you know, try to do it kindly. You'll see their character really quick in their response. Um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry I didn't know, or they'll get defensive and hateful. And anyway, you'll, you'll know their character real fast. Um, I, if you ever see me doing anything wrong in one of my videos, call me out. Absolutely call me out. Um, I am not perfect, and I do not want to be that guy. So if you see me, if you see me doing something wrong, call me out. I welcome it. I ask for it. But there's, uh, I've got a big obstacle here, so I'm going to wait um, to film it. Um, but, you know, some people have this mentality of, oh, well, it's public land, our taxes pay for it, therefore it's my land. That's my land. It's a very selfish mindset. And the fact of the matter is, it's our land. You know, I'm in National Forest. This does not belong to me. Um, the fact of the matter is, the federal government owns it. Um, they let us use it, just like, you know, our tax, our taxes pay for the White House and uh, the national capital. State taxes pay for state capitals. We don't own those. We can't just walk in there whenever we want to. Same applies to public land. So, um, so there's we, we've got to have this mentality of you know this is ours. We've got to take care of it. So, if you see someone doing wrong, call them out. Do your best not to be that guy. Um, and I think we're going to have, uh, I think we will continue to have amazing places to, to go and experience and, and see and awesome places to wheel and camp and all those sort of things. So um, I'm going to go tackle this obstacle now. Well, those are always a lot of fun. One more little short rocky section up here, but it's not that big a deal. Um, got hot too. But I did actually use my rear locker on that first ledge uh, when I wasn't climbing up it because it was still kind of wet and slick. And so happy to report that uh, my rear locker is indeed fixed and worked. So. I, I knew it was fixed, but it's just good to actually use it and get confirmation. Oh. This is just an easy dirt road that's about to dump me out onto a major county road. And then the highway. So I'm gonna um, call it quits on this video here because there's not much else to see. Uh, but thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. And do me a favor and you know, don't be that guy. And let's help others not be that guy too so we can keep these amazing places that we have access to and see amazing things and camp in amazing places and you know all that stuff we love so um if you would you know give me some youtube love like subscribe uh, share all that stuff uh, if you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel gain access to special content uh, all of our gps data like this trip uh, special events like the one that we'll be hosting here in the ozarks and just uh well tomorrow for me for you that'll be the next video uh check out the patreon link in the description and for our merchandise shirts hats, pencil stickers all those things uh, go to shopoverlandapparel.com 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.